what up, 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 what up. Today we're going to do class and session. We got class and session today. And um, we're going to stay a little more on the serious side today. You know, we, uh, we've we been doing a lot of laughing. We've been doing a lot of laughing lately. And one of the reasons why I like to do a lot of laughing because I always known that have you ever noticed that laughing was prohibited in school? You ever thought about that? You ever thought about you can get in trouble for fucking laughing? That's how you should know that school is evil. Right? That's how you should know that it's run by evil ass people that don't even like to fucking be happy. You ever notice that? You can't even laugh. Like, you be giggling in the background and motherfucker tell you, get out the class, Mr. Johnson. What the fuck? I was just laughing. It don't matter. You're interrupting. That's how you know this shit evil Because you can't even fucking be happy in school But anywho That ain't what we're talking about So today We're gonna We're gonna jump into a school format today We're gonna jump into a form of school today And um First and most foremost I know we have a lot of fans in here But uh How many people in here are artists? How many up and coming artists are in here? Are any people want to be artists Or will soon be artists? Right? First let's get a head count Let's get a head count of how many artists how many people are artists or how many people want to be artists? And if you don't want to be an artist, I'm pretty sure this might help you. Right? This will help you in a lot of ways, a lot of possibilities, and it'll cut you a lot of costs. And it'll actually it'll actually help you a lot on your path to being an artist. All right. Uh, two things that you need to start off with with being an artist. Before we get to that, my reason for doing this is single-handedly based on the simple fact that there's a lot of people that hit me in my dms and they ask me for uh they ask me for assistance or they ask me for help or you know what i think about their music or so far and i can't reply to everybody it's just too many people it's literally in the hundreds of thousands of niggas asking me to check out their music and all type of shenanigans and schnook necks so I can't reply to everybody, so I figure I just make a live to where I talk to the general public about the shit. All right. So, two things you need to understand as an up and coming artist, right? Rule number one, right? What you need to understand and what you got to stop, what you got to start telling yourself and what you got to start really telling yourself fuck a handout. Fuck asking for anyone to help you do anything. That's the first step. The first step is fuck asking anybody for anything. First, first step. Fuck, fuck getting recognition from anybody. Fuck all of that. This is the first step. Look, the problem with us in our world. And the problem with up and coming artists is that we think, we think too big. And the game is a booby trap. The rap game is a booby trap. The rap game got y'all thinking that you should be bigger than what you are. Or the rap game thought got you, you, the rap game will make you belittle yourself and make you feel like you ain't shit because you comparing yourself to people who are pushed by machines and shit like that, right? So to make you feel like that and then you'll be like well i don't have this i don't have that and then instead of instead of actually going to learn how to do shit or do the shit yourself you'll sit back and build that mentality and where you start lying to yourself like well maybe if i had this then i can do that then you create the lie then the lie becomes reality then you manifest yourself into not doing nothing right so first of all stop Stop asking people for shit and stop thinking that you need the shit that everybody else got to be successful in this rap game. That's the first thing you need to stop doing as an artist, right? All right. The second thing is numbers. Stop focusing on numbers. Especially from a social media standpoint. Stop telling yourself i need numbers i need big numbers this shit is a lie all of this shit is a lie bro all this number game shit is a lie once again it's the industry game designed to make you fucking feel belittled 
It's a lie. Stop telling yourself you need numbers. You don't need numbers, dog. You don't need no fucking 7 million, 8 million motherfucking followers. It don't, none of that shit matters. You don't need, like that shit is all a joke, right? You gotta understand, half of these social medias, they don't even let you touch all your fans anyway. So you don't even need that many. What you need a fucking 8 million followers for, Instagram only gonna let you reach about motherfucking 10,000 of them. You see all these niggas with, nigga look at my shit, 120,000 some followers. Instagram, when I log on to Instagram, that shit say, we are contacting your people to tell certain people who are live. Nigga, they ain't gonna let you reach all the people any day. They don't work like that. You see the Drakes, you see all these niggas with big ass 100,000 followers. These niggas getting nigga 10,000 comments max. They not gonna let you reach all them people. So who gives a fuck about maximum numbers? Nobody cares about none of that shit. Look, those are two things you need to worry about. Stop looking for handouts and stop looking for gratification from motherfuckers who are slaves. And the second thing is stop worrying about numbers. What you need to worry about is content. Content is the key. There's plenty of ways. Look, we're in an era where it's not about skill. It's not about buzz. It's not about nothing. It's about the ability to obtain eyes. Once you can obtain eyes, then people will listen to whatever you do. We're not in an era where... All right, no, 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 let me cut that. Third thing, let me jump into the third thing. Rule number one, before you go into a studio and make a single goddamn record, you need to focus on your image. Rule, I mean, rule number three, before you go into the studio and make a single fucking track, you need to be figuring out what the fuck you gonna look like. We in an era where people don't fall in love with your with your skill first. That don't exist no more. People don't give a fuck about who you are. Niggas do not buy skill no more. Niggas don't buy talent. Niggas buy look. How you look will determine if I like you or not. People buy look now. Oh, he fly, oh, he's flat, oh, he's swaggy, oh, he look like this, oh, he look like that. Damn, I'm going to listen to him now. What you think you just going to go in there and rock a hoodie? You know how hip-hop niggas you always want to wear hoodies and things? No, nah, nigga, that thing over with. You need to be figuring out how you going to look. You need to, Not only how you going to look, you need to figure out your whole aesthetic of what your video is going to look like. What type of lane you thought? Oh, There's so many things you need to really, 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 really think about this shit, bro. Look. Look, man. I'm gonna take Drake for example. Right? I'm gonna take Drake for example. Drake was a dope rapper. He always been a dope rapper. Whether y'all think he got ghostwriters or not, he always been a dope rapper, right? But you notice. When the ghostwriting thing kind of came out, Drake had to transform. Because first they was like, he a dope rapper from Canada, little scrawny nigga. You feel me? And then when the ghostwriter thing came out, people was like, oh, he kind of do look like he got ghostwriters. So you know what Drake did? Drake hit the gym. ASAP. He hit the gym. He hurry up and recreated his character. Y'all ain't peep that. Hurry up. You know what? I'm gonna hit the gym real quick and get buff. So I so, I, so visually people start saying, no, nah, Drake kind of buff now. You know, he, he buff niggas don't really need people to do their work for. Them. Look, dog, it's a psychological thing. It's a psychological thing. When Drake got buff, people stopped questioning his ghostwriting thing. People was like, uh, oh, Drake. No, he don't really got ghostwriters like that. He be lifting weights and shit. He like buff now. He got like a chest and things. Drake started taking pictures with his shirt off and shit. Nigga holding the dumbbells and shit. Nigga had a little Canadian bacon six pack. You seen a little Canadian bacon six pack? 
I said, look at my boy Drake growing on up, trying to be a man and things. But I think Drake man thing, I think it disappeared when he did that interview with LeBron. He shouldn't have never did that. I wish I was behind Drake's PR team, because I would have I would have told him, don't do that thing. Drake shouldn't have never did that thing with LeBron, because that was like a thing that kind of made me feel a certain way. It's like, you know, I just, I just feel he did like, you know, like too much, like he talked about my, my girl and like, I don't, I don't, I, I, you know, I just, I watch battle rap for a living. Oh, oh, oh. I said, no, Drake, don't do that thing. See, and that's when Drake be killing his thing, man. Drake be killing his thing when he do too much talking. Look, Drake. Don't do interviews and things, man. Just do your rap thing and do your buff thing so people could think you a street thing. You feel me? Do your rapping thing and your buff thing so people could be like, nah, Drake really hardcore. Because when he do his talking thing, all oh, that go out the window. Oh. You know, yo, Drake the only rapper... <laughs> Drake, my boy, geez. That's, I can talk about Drake. No, it's my nigga. I fuck with Drake. But I'm going to tell Drake like this, my G. What be killing Drake? Drake, the only rapper that could go from the studio. Yeah, six God, fuck with me. Yeah, uh, your mom's a bitch. The nigga had to shoot her. Six God, Petruda, right? When the song cut out. Yo, Drake, how was that song? Uh, You know, it was like dope. It was like dope, you know, we, we went in there, we re-recorded it, you know, everything was perfect, you know, we had pizza, you know, <laughs> like Drake, the only rapper in the world that could get away with this, like he's the only rapper that we have accepted, that he could, he could, he like, Drake like Urkel, he like Stefan, that nigga getting the booth thing and turn into like a killer, 40 my shooter, some some Ur Drake might be the real live Urkel. He get in the booth and be like a gangster thing and he get out the booth. Uh you know, I just make music, you know. I like Canadian bacon. But anywho, to my boy Drake, don't be doing no more interviews and things. Your PR team need to speak up for you for that type of thing. Cause that no them them interviewing things. Them things ain't, that's not the type of thing you need to be doing things. No, but those, those things ain't a thing. But, but look, so what I'm telling you, right? What I'm, t Michael Jackson was the reverse Drake. Michael Jackson was the reverse Drake. Michael Jackson do all the corny things on camera. Hi guys, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Michael Jackson. When the camera cut off, hey, cuz on Rolling 60s, nigga better bring me something to drink, nigga, on Crip. What y'all thought Michael Jackson was a regular thing? Oh, hell no, he was thugging. You ain't see Michael Jackson let off the Tommy gun in the video, nigga, Smooth Criminal? He had a song called Smooth Criminal. He was telling y'all right then, I'm getting out of this shit smooth. Michael was a fucking gang member. Whether y'all know it or not, that nigga was a crip. Whether y'all know it, man, you better watch these documentaries when Michael when they when Michael didn't know the camera was recording. Hey, you ever seen that video where they was like me in the dollar store and, and Michael Jackson was in some type of store where they had like like very rare items? It's like, yeah, I want that one. I want that one. Let me get that one. Um, let me get that one. Oh uh, yeah, bring those. Uh, put those in the back. Oh uh, yeah, let me get that one. That's how you know a nigga got unlimited amounts of money. That's how you know it. That nigga was in the store where they sold the rarest items of Bolivia. Oh, let me get that one. Um, let me have that one. Oh, uh, yo, do we got that one? I think we bought that one already. I'll get that one. Bring that to the back. My man, my man Mike was in there cashing out. But look. All right. Back to the artistry side of it. Look, you need to focus on your image. Image is important, dog. Listen to me. Image is important. 
it's very important you always need to focus on your image and you need to create iconic looks for yourself like i said going back to michael jackson he created iconic looks for himself he had the thriller jacket you feel me he had the motherfucking the you feel me he had the the like michael jackson has costumes because those things are iconic dog you got to worry about your image like image is important image comes before skill image comes before skill what are you going to sell dog everybody can rap nowadays everybody can learn how to rap nowadays well not everybody some of you niggas weak but your image bro you got to learn how to sell your image it's important right so before before this goes to all the up and coming artists before right before right all right look let me let me break something down to y'all when you when you buy a new fighting game right but look, i'm gonna break it down to this scenario when you buy a brand new fighting game and you never played with none of the characters who you pick first what you look for first image You really look through the character thing and go, which one of these niggas look like they do things? That's what you do. Which one of these characters look like they do stronger things? Image. Right? You play a brand new fighting game, you going for image first. You don't care about nothing. You need to see who do type of things. When you figure that thing out, you go, all right, cool. I'm picking him. Hey. It's image, dog. So look, focus on your image. Instead of writing... Instead of going in the studio, spending eight hours, or going in your room, spending all this time writing music, st stop doing those th type of things. Those ain't the things you need to be worried about. You need to be doing things of image types. So look, focus on your image thing, right? You want people to say, hey man, have you seen that one nigga? That's the that's what you want. You don't want people to say, hey, have you heard that one nigga? Cause that heard thing gonna go right out the window. You need to say, hey, you seen that one dude? That that dude that that dude with the one thing? Yeah, that dude would be doing things. That dude. Yeah, that dude he did some type of thing. Then look, I'm gonna tell you this, right? So, so it's a lie. It's a lie. The rap game is a lie, right? So they got everybody. You, they got everybody trying to get millions of views, right? So people like, yo, I'm trying to get a million views. That's all cool if you want to play that million view game. But when you start getting very creative, your videos go in a different type of thing, right? So I start looking at YouTube and I start saying, you know, what are some of the most top viewed videos in the world? Like some of them top view videos in the world. Man, there's niggas you never seen or never heard of they got mid they got videos in the billions of you billion eight billion nine billion so i go to their video and i go why they video so much why this shit got so many views who is this weird nigga right you go to a video it's a nigga spray painted in solid gold in the middle of the forest doing this walk on right the nigga only said three words the whole song. Only three words. Bongo. 
right? You want me to tell you why his video like that? Because he was doing things. That's why. Y'all was sitting here worried about, yo, I'm trying to look hard. You feel me? He just was like, oh, man, I'm going to create my image and do things. And he started doing things. And then there you have it. Look. One of the reasons why I'm going into this whole image thing is because I want to tell y'all this. I want to tell y'all this. Stop focusing on being cool. That's my whole thing for saying this image thing. Stop trying to be cool. I noticed that everybody want to be cool. Everybody try their best to be cool. Right? I've been noticing that. Like everybody... Like everybody trying their best to be, yo, look at me, you feel me? I just want to let y'all know, you feel me? I really do this. Like everybody trying their best, everybody trying their best to be cool. Everybody trying to break their best to be, to show people that they really about that and all that. Man, look, dog, you going to be in a long line of weirdo niggas trying to show your people you really about that life. gonna be in a long like a long a super long line of weirdos trying to show niggas that you about that like look work on your image man don't be afraid to be outside the box don't be afraid to be outside the box bro Don't be afraid to be outside. I remember back in the days, people said Michael Jackson was doing antics and things. Oh, man, he's not going to last that long. He's just doing gimmick things. Man, look at all the people that was out the box. Michael Jackson's out the box. Jimi Hendrix was out the box. Nigga, Albert Einstein, Tesla, everybody was out the box. Everybody who goes out the box end up being remembered. Good morning. I'll try some of Everybody who goes out the box end up being remembered. Everybody that go in the box, uh, same old, same old. Prince was out the box. Like the, the list goes on. The people who went outside the box, the list. Oh, go outside the box. Don't stop staying in the box, right? Like everybody that went out. Like, all right, look. I'm going I'm to give you all some homework real quick. Get on YouTube right now and type in hits from the 70s. Type in, no, get on YouTube and type in hits from the 50s, hits from the 60s, hits from the 70s, hits from the 80s, and hits from the 90s. Notice, you're going to see billions of artists that had big records, billions. It's been happening for years. You're going to see billions of artists. Billions of artists that had big records. Hundreds, thousands of artists that had big records. You don't know them because they all sound the same. In the 70s, boom, 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 okay. Something she wants since upon a week. Yeah, you didn't hear everybody sound like Phil Collins. Everybody, right? 60s, 70s, everybody had the same shit. It was the motherfuckers who was different, who stood out, dog. But it was all, it's always the motherfuckers that go, you know what? I'm gonna do a different type of thing. Hmm? Everybody who went left field, they remembered. They gonna always be remembered because they went left field. They remembered James Brown. He was doing. Oh my God! You got to think back in the James Brown thing. That's when everybody was doing regular things. You know, playing their little banjos and guitar. Man, James Brown was doing all type of shitlets. James Brown didn't do shenanigans. He did shenudicates. He was James Brown was doing all type of shenudicates back in the days. 
James Brown was doing shenanigans. Man, you got to think, bro. Look at Jimi Hendrix, man. Look at his image. Look at his image compared to the rest of the people, man. He had the big afro, the headband. Feel me, lighting guitar. Bro, look. Create your image. What's up, my G? Create your image, bro. The image is important. Give me your back. Uh, yeah. I'm going to slide it one more time. Look, I'm going to tell y'all this. No. I'm going to tell y'all this, right? So, y'all could, y'all could praise all your favorite artists all you want. Right? You could praise all your favorite artists all you want. You could say, you could praise whoever you want, from the Lil Pumps to the whoever. You could praise whoever you want all day. Right? Listen to what I'm saying. You could praise all your favorite artists. You could praise them all you want, and you could believe that they lit all you want. None of these niggas make more money than Tech Nine. None of them. None of them. Take now like number three on the number four on the fucking Moses successful list. Take now. Why? Because his image, dog. Look at his image. He like number four on the most successful rapper list ever. Look at his image, dog. Face paint, all type of wild shit. You feel me? Motherfucker, 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 motherfucker. Look at his image, dog. This image. I don't want to hear no talks about nobody. Tech Nine. Don't talk to me about nobody. Image. Image. Work on your image, bro. Image. Don't be afraid to go left. Everybody go right. Don't be afraid to go left, bro. Listen to me. Up and coming artists. Listen to me. I'm not saying that rappers are broke. What I'm saying is don't be afraid to go left field. Don't be afraid to go left field. Stop doing what everybody else is doing because you're only going to get washed out. You're going to get you going to get washed out. If you do what everybody else is doing, you're going to be lit in a couple of days and you're going to die the fuck out. Let's look. Dog, where is Fetty Wap? Trap Queen was number one everywhere. It's over. Designer, it was everywhere. It's over. Dog, you do what everybody else do, you going to disappear like everybody else. It's over. It's, oh, it's just as fast as you came in. You out of here. It's over. Look, what I'm telling you is this. You follow these trends. Look, they call it waves, right? Do you know why they call it a wave? What happens with waves? Can you tell me what happened with actual waves? They get big and they fucking die out. That's why it's called a wave or jump.
on his wave. Y'all on his wave? That's why they call it a wave. They come and they go. Oh, he wavy. All right, cool. I bet he is. Look, what I'm telling you, and I'm going to keep telling y'all niggas this. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to be different. 6 9 he's different. Look, rep, look, I'm going to break this down to y'all. 6 9 is different. He's not like the other ones, and he don't sound like none of them. Whether you like 6 9 or not, you can't even call him a mumble rapper because he's not. He don't rap like them niggas. He not a mumble rapper. Whether you don't like him or not, he's not a mumble rapper. I don't care how many children he fucked. Nigga, Christopher Columbus fucked maximum children, raped people, killed everybody. He got a holiday. Don't tell me that. Don't get on here and try to bash 6 9 and you celebrate Columbus holiday. I don't want to hear it. Don't do that. What I'm saying is, he was different. He different. Whether you want to accept it or not, the man's different. He's different. He different. And I don't see him going nowhere no time soon. He's in the game for good. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to be different. Y'all got to understand, this man, this man is a walking metaphor. He branded himself. The man has... 6 9 tattooed on itself 69 times. Nigga, this nigga's a god. Bruh, think about this from an image standpoint, from a promotional image standpoint. The man tattooed his name on his face. And all, all over his body. This is walking. Promo. He's a walking flyer of his own name. He's literally a walking promotion of himself. Nigga, this nigga is a metaphor. So what I'm saying is, y'all got to understand this shit, right? That man took the look. That man really went to the tattoo shop and said, you know what? This what the fuck No think about this right? I want you to think about the process of this This man went to the tattoo shop And said Tattoo a big ass 6 9 on my head And all over my body And I'm running with this 6 9 shit And there's nothing nobody could tell me That's my image My image is my name I'm gonna wear my name on me To force people to remember it Right You know what 6 9 is He's literally a walking version of Eminem, my name is. 
Eminem came out with my name is self-entitled it forced the name inside of y'all mind Eminem popped and became big as he is because what he was different he was different different my name is who my name is what my name is Ficky Ficky Slim Shady what look at this shit dog you got to understand that man took a gamble, but it wasn't a gamble. Look, I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of y'all niggas, a lot of y'all niggas ain't going to never fully go in this rap shit because you don't got no faith in yourself. Listen to me. You don't got faith in yourself. That's why you ain't going to never really pop. This rap shit ain't about, it ain't about none of that. Look, I'm going to bring up, no, nah, you don't got faith in yourself. You be doubting yourself. I'm going to bring up one nigga that's about to take over the internet. He might die out soon, but he about to take over the whole internet. One rapper that's about to to take over the whole I'm telling you that he about to take over for dog Blueface Blueface about to take over he's the next in line for the hottest nigga out that nigga found something he's whether you want to accept it or not and if you don't know who he is you gonna know very soon if you don't know who Blueface is you gonna know who Blueface Blueface is very soon. He about to take over the internet soon. That nigga found something that nobody ever found. He found a way to rap that nobody in the world ever found how to rap. My nigga. My man found a way to rap in the future, dog. He learned how to rap before the beat come on. Like, he learned how to rap in your mind before you eat. Bruh, the man learned how to do a thing that's not possible. Bruh, my man learned how to do a thing that you can't do. My nigga, he literally, every song he made, I love. I, my nigga, I'm the most, let me tell you something, dog. I'm the most conscious nigga that y'all go ever meet, and I don't like nothing. I fell in love with this nigga music after the first listen. I literally was in love, dog. Like, I couldn't stop playing it, my nigga. It was the greatest shit I ever heard. Like, I'm talking about, I literally went on YouTube and looked at all of this nigga's song. Dog, I went straight. Dog, I had a studio with, I mean, I had a session with Punch, dog. I put Punch up on this nigga, dog. I took, I literally took Blueface to TD, dog. My nigga, the very next morning, dog, Punch was literally quoting this nigga lines on Twitter, Tatiana's and all that. Dog, I told Punch, I said, Punch, this nigga the GOAT. I'm telling you, he Punch, you know, Punch don't really listen to nobody. Punch don't really listen to nobody. He was like, let me hear you. Punch was listening, he said. I said, I told you. He said, they like, what is this thing? I said, this is a different thing right here. Blueface is a different type of thing. He a, he a thing out here. Right? Literally, the very next day punch literally was quoting his lines on twitter i said yep there you have it look he a different blue face is a different thing he a different type of thing he be doing things in the studio right
But this is the cold part about it. My nigga, dude found the style that don't exist. Look, third eye rap, I know you be posting your conscious things, but what if you listen to Blueface one time, all that conscious thing going out the window. I don't listen to no more conscious things no more. I'll listen. Face is, you gonna know who Blueface is very soon. That nigga said, nigga coming on necklace, nigga talking out his neck, we gonna leave his ass necklace. Yo, I literally fell to the floor in tears. I fell to the floor in tears, dog. Like, I'm talking about. My nigga, dog, that nigga said, mop the floor, hide the wet signs just to catch him slipping. Dog, he like low-key the goat, bruh. No, you not understanding, dog. My dude is literally the goat, bruh. I never wanted to be a fan of nobody. I really am a fan of this dude. He literally the best ever. Dog, you not understand it. My nigga. Whatever. All right. So you know, you know, you know, you know, every rapper has a pocket, right? Right? So California niggas, we rap a little faster. Like we rap a little in front of the beat, right? New York niggas, they drag a little bit, so they catch the back end of the one. You feel me? It's like, and that's how you can tell the difference between the New York nigga. Bitches on bank, smoke, bezel, bank. When the dun went, bum went. And the New York nigga, I fought her with the dunner, the dunner, went the ba bum, the dunner, and the dunner, went under, and the ton. You feel me? Blueface, he rapped five bars ahead of the beat. He rapped like. Before the beat come on. I, I can't explain it. Like. He literally broke the rules of rap. He literally broke. Dog. He the only rapper that could rap. No. Fuck E-40. E-40 don't. Not fuck E-40. But E-40 don't come close to this. My man rap. He, no, you not understanding, dog. Blueface is a different type of rapper animal thing. He a different type of thing, dog. You not understand. Look. And why y'all talking? Fuck talking. Go listen. He rap in a pocket. Third eye, I'm telling you, G. That's a different type of thing. He rap in a pocket that nobody ever found. He found the magical hole to the beat. What song did I play the most? Uh, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna blow her back. I'm gonna blow her back. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna blow her back. Yo, first, I got first, I, I heard Respect is Crip and I was addicted. I said, I gotta see more of his things. Then I seen Blow Her Back. I said, oh my God, this nigga the GOAT. Bro, this nigga the best, right? No, I'm going to make sure he famous. Fuck you talking about? I'm going to help him. He got a different type of energy. I, whatever he is, he got a different energy, and I love it. That thing different. No, I don't want to do no song with him. I'm a fan. I don't want to do no music with him. I'm going to sit back and watch. I went to his show the other day. I had my little mask on in the back in the front row. I was listening in the crowd, turning up with the young kids. 
What? I went to his show like a motherfucker. Think I did? Shit, nigga. I'm coming to watch. Own Crip. He hard. Fuck you niggas talk about. He literally the greatest. I'm a fan. Nigga made me a fan. And that's what I'm telling you. Right? What I'm, The reason why I brought him up. Because look at what's happening. Everybody. They told everybody we got to rap on the beat. My man literally raps off beat. And he literally the best. I was in the front, right? Look. Everybody rapping all in pocket and on pocket and doing everything by the rules. My man literally broke all the rules and now he passing up everybody. He lit dog, he's in this he's in the conversation of studios, bro. Like every studio that I went to, he's in heavy rotation of conversation. Every studio Every studio that I go to, he's in conversation. When your name buzzing like that, oh, you next up. He literally said it. I'm the next big thing. He, Dog, he said it. Third eye, man, I ain't listening to them old ass Wu-Tang niggas. I don't care about them metaphorical uh, ninja star throwing slashing ass niggas. I don't care about the My battle axe with battle racks, battle racks. Battle racks with battle racks with the fratter rack, the leprechauns with slur slicing the pepper rod, pepper on, pepper and dipping the leprechauns. And I don't care about the old ass nigga, nigga, that ain't my era. Nigga, I'm listening to Blueface. Don't try to make me listen to the old ass Rizzles and Gazas, Gaza strips and all them things. I'm over them things. I ain't listening to all them Dungeons and Dragon flying ass niggas. Fuck that. Crouch the tiger head, dragon rapping ass niggas. Flying through the ninja sword, the di draggers. Daggers, boom, I'm naming with the ninja stars, porn fars. And I ain't listening to none of those things, you crazy. I'm not in that thing. I don't want to hear the bladder racks. I don't care about none of y'all shinobi slashings. That ain't my thing. We gonna respect this cripping. Fuck you talk about. Nigga mop the floor out the right side, didn't catch you slipping. Nigga, we on that. We ain't listening to those fucking Nigga, I lift the katana, Rama, Ramadan, Stama, Samas, Rama, Samarans. Man, I'm not listening to none of those Gaza things. That ain't my thing. I'm not listening to them things, nigga. I'm going nigga, mop the floor and hide the west side just to catch you slipping. That's the thing I'm on. Nigga, I ain't on those older things. People always trying to make you listen to older things. I'm not listening to those things. Those things, you y'all had y'all time. Y'all had y'all time of doing things. I'm not listening to those things no more. Shit, I want to listen to uh, nigga Tatiana's. You feel me? You know what's crazy? I I I never really was a Wu Tang fan. I still don't know, like, not one Wu-Tang, nothing. I never listened to nothing Wu-Tang. No, it's no it's no offense. Like, I respect they let... You know how, like, Lil Yachty and them and all them niggas, like, yeah, I respect that Tupac is a legend, but I didn't grow up to Tupac. That's how I feel about Wu-Tang. Like, I respect everything they did. I respect the whole Wu-Tang. I just didn't listen to nothing Wu-Tang. No, and I'm not going to. I listen to Met. I mean, I listen to Met the Man and them, but you feel me? Uh, the rest of those things, they they threw too many ninja stars for me. The rest of the Wu Tang things, they threw too many daggers for me. I, I'm not into dagger rap. I think I heard one song. I forgot what it was, and one of the dudes was talking about flying daggers. And I was like, yep, I'm, I'm not, not into this karate movie rap thing. Not my cup of tea. Nope. Not my cup of tea of doing things. He was talking about flying daggers and things. And I was just like, oh, this Wu-Tang going on. They don't like, they like, they like ninja star throwers. I was like, nope, I'm out. Not my cup of tea. Right, they like three ninja knuckle up, three they like three ninja kick back, twelve ninjas. 
They be doing metaphorical things. I like listening to things, but when I hear too many big words of things, I just, all, my mind automatically cut off. When people be metaphorical of the metaphors, Max Mafferitz, Ass Mafferitz, Tab Mafferitz, Bass Pack, and the tab Tabernacles, Tabernacles. Oh, my mind automatically go. Mop the flow hot. The west side just to catch him slipping. I can't listen to those tabernacles. Nope. That ain't my cup of tea. Can't do it. Not those things. When I hear somebody rely, when I hear somebody use a fucking 10 syllable word, I automatically cut it out. The poor Rafikit raised my philophicates. What? <clears throat> I automatically cut it off. I would not be listening to maximum syllables of things. Not. There's not, there's too many things to be trying to bob your head to of things. So it's not my cup of tea. No. Too many things. I would not. And that's, you know, I feel, I fuck with Wu-Tang. But you want me to tell you why I couldn't really, would really listen to Wu-Tang though? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. One of the reasons why I couldn't really, really listen to Wu-Tang, because they beats just had that thing that make you want to be mad all the time in the New York thing. Every time I heard a, one of their Dungeons and Dragons sword, Elder Scrolls type of beats, I was like, this thing make me want to just bob my head and not laugh. I said, yep, this thing not happy enough for me. I'm getting out of here. I can't listen to these things. This like look, this like evil frequencies. listen to those things no more nope I need higher vibe things when I listen to Blueface he give me an energy thing that make me want to go out and when I listen to Blueface that shit make me want to go outside and be out here nigga I don't want to be no crouching tiger flying dragon thing of Wu-Tang thing will not Anywho, so before I go, like I said, rule number one, dog, don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to go to the field. Don't be afraid to break rules. I got to talk low because my baby's sleep. Don't be afraid to break rules. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do what everybody else is telling you not to do. Stop trying to fit in, right? That's what I'm saying. Just stop trying to fit in. Stop trying to be like everyone, especially the new artists and the up-and-coming artists. Because I see so many artists like, oh, well, if that's working, then that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm going to rap like this, or I'm going to make a song like this, right? You know what bothers me the most? When somebody when somebody play me a record and they rap in that one pocket. You know the little, the little pocket that everybody rap in nowadays. I hate when people send me records and they rap in their pocket. Soon as I hear that pocket, I automatically cut the song off because you ain't being yourself. You going with what works. You ain't being yourself. Soon as you rap in that little triplet pocket, I automatically cut your music off. Off. 
you ain't being yourself. You ain't even finding pockets for yourself. You just, oh, this type of beat that work, this what everybody else doing, so I'm going to do what everybody else doing. Look, find your own world, find your own thing, Lord. Find your own world, find your own lane, create your own space, create your own world, create your own fans, create your own people. Look, stop being a follower. If you're going to be an artist, be an artist. If you're an artist, you got to be a creator. You're going to be a painter, right? Pablo Picasso, I want, I want y'all to think about this. Look at all the artists we ever had, all the artists in the world, right? All the artists you ever had in the world. And then think about Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso drew pictures like a fucking third grader. And he still remembered more than 95% of the painters Nigga, do you know who painted the Mona Lisa? Nope. Didn't Da Vinci paint that one? Nigga? Anywho, nigga, you only remember two niggas, nigga. Nigga, that nigga and Picasso. Back in the days, people was like, nigga, Picasso, you ain't gonna never be shit painting these fucking upside down, cockeyed, cockeyed people and broken head people. You ain't gonna never be shit. Nobody's gonna remember these stupid ass drawings. Now look, nigga, fucking centuries later, nigga, we Picasso is known as a goat. He's known as one of the goats in the painting world. So what I'm saying is this. Don't be afraid to go and don't always think that you ain't up to par because sometimes your less skill can be your greatest skill ever. Right? Don't don't sometimes when you hear Niggas like me and Lupe and Royce 59 doing all these flip floppical things and you get a little discouraged and you be probably thinking you can't do them flip floppical things. Don't always think that that's the thing to do. Sometimes like skills can come in many different forms. Me and Royce and all them, we doing them flip floppical things. Nigga blue face about to pass us up. Get what I'm saying? So sometimes your gift can be your curse and sometimes your curse can be your gift. It works both ways. It works both ways. Don't ever think that. It works both ways. So when you when you go, okay, I don't have enough words as them or I'm not as, as technical as them, don't take that as a hit on the head. Take that as, okay, boom, right? I find another thing to do, you feel me? Like that one boxer, right? He might not be as good as Floyd Mayweather and Mike Tyson and all that, but that nigga found a thing that he going to be remembered forever. You know that one boxer that be doing dancing things? You, I don't know what's his name, but he like a boxer. He be doing, he dance in the ring. You can't hit him. He like the Eddie Gordo of the boxing thing. No, he a black dude. He like Dominican or Caribbean or something. You know who I'm talking about? No, fuck Muhammad Ali. This nigga be doing, he dance. Like he do the, he do the Eddie Gordo thing in the ring. You know who I'm talking about? Man, just get on YouTube and type in the dancing boxer. I don't know his name. He like a dancing boxer. He like, you ever played Tekken, Eddie Gordo? He do the Eddie Gordo thing in the boxing ring. He do the, remember only the strong, ba na na way, ba na na way, na na na, ba na na way, ba na na way, na na na, ba na na way. He do the ba na na way thing in, in the actual ring. You can't hit him. He be doing things. He do all type of things. Y'all don't remember Bon Ana Way, huh? That brought back memories. Only the strong boy. That was when I first was like, I need to learn that type of weather. No, only only real niggas watch Only the Strong. You gotta be a super real nigga if you know about Only the Strong. Nigga, only the strong nigga. It, all right, it's three movies that you need to watch. If you didn't watch these movies, we ain't friends. All right, if you didn't watch Three Ninjas, right? Because you got to think, in our era, karate movies was it. 
Like, these kids, these niggas be depressed and shit. They can't fight. They don't got no hands. In our era, karate movies was the shit, nigga. That was like, what, nigga? Right? So, nigga, if you ain't watch, nigga, Three Ninjas, nigga, Only the Strong, and Van Damme Blood Sport, nigga, we ain't friends. If you ain't watch those three things, we can't be friends. We, you know, I, I fucks with you. You feel me? I fucks with you. Hell yeah. Stay over there. You feel me? If, if, if you ain't watched those three movies, we don't got too much to talk about. If you ain't watch at least one of the three ninjas, you feel me? One, just one of them. Nigga, we had hella karate movies. Nigga, we had three ninjas. Nigga, we had Ninja Turtles. Nigga, we had motherfucking Van Damme, Bruce Lee. Nigga, Chuck Norris. Nigga, the Banana Way. Nigga, Capoeira. Nigga, I still don't know his name, but I just call him Banana Way. Nigga, we had him. Nigga, we had, nigga, we had Power Rangers, nigga, we had VR Trooper, we had maximum things that told you, man, what you talking about, nigga, get down. We had, we had Jackie Chan, we had, nigga, then Jet Li came a little later, then IP Man and all niggas, but, nigga, we had, we grew up the throwing hands. We was from the throwing hands era, it wasn't no call, of, it was only one nigga that had a gun in my area, Mario. Mario was the first nigga that came out shooting things. When he had the little firepower, when you jump in the little flower, Mario was the first nigga that we was like, damn, he got like a weapon. Mega Man and Mario was like ho niggas. They ain't had that was when the depression thing kicked in now that I think about it. Mega Man and Mario, first niggas that wanted to pull guns out on niggas. Prior to that, nigga, it was was all hand, nigga. Throw your shit. Nigga. Throw your shit up. Them niggas want to shoot things. We should ban Mega Man.